When I was young, I always looked forward to the amazing things that were going to happen in my 20s. Landing the dream job, going on amazing travels, finding the love of my life. It's the decade that's glamorized as our golden years, and I never really thought about what would happen next. Well, it turns out it only gets better. I turned 33 in October, and I have to say that I've never felt more content. I realize that life doesn't get better in terms of reaching new milestones, but it gets better because we can refine and embrace our genuine selves. All the effort I put in my 20s feels like it's just now showing up, and it was well worth the wait. Today, I wanted to talk about the life lessons, the mindsets, and the habits that really helped me to elevate my life in my 30s. But no matter what decade you're in, I hope that the points that I'm making will be helpful to you to thrive at any stage of life. Life definitely gets more complex in our 30s, and I can see how it can take over if we're not intentional. Work will demand more from you, people have certain expectations, and even family members might impose their ideas onto you. But it is absolutely no one else's job to figure out what your limits are. It is our job to establish those boundaries and learn how to communicate them. As someone who has people-pleasing tendencies, I feel like learning how to draw boundaries has really helped me to keep my inner peace and also establish what's important in my life and what's not. As soon as I started to say no more often and I spoke up for myself, there was this clear divide between the people who valued me and respected me and the people who didn't. I wish that I had known that setting boundaries means that we're teaching other people how they can treat us. It would have definitely saved a lot of headaches and a lot of heartaches, but I guess better late than never. And speaking of being comfortable with not everyone liking you, I think about the fact that there are so many different versions of ourselves in other people's minds. For example, you guys might think that I'm very calm and collected from watching my videos, but my family members, my husband, my sister, or even my coworkers might have a different idea of me. Everyone has a different viewpoint depending on how they grew up and what their values and beliefs are, and that's completely okay. It's okay not to be liked by everyone. But when I started to realize that I cannot control how people view me, I started to think about how I view myself. And it's crazy how things start to shift when you start dressing for yourself, making decisions based on what you want, spending time and money doing the things that you like. Of course, I'm not saying be inconsiderate of other people's opinions, but it is more about prioritizing yourself and not seeking external validation all the time. I think I've just grown to feel more comfortable in my own skin and it just feels good. It is a great feeling to go through life knowing that you could just be your authentic self. I think for the longest time, I was kind of telling myself the same monologue, that I had a difficult upbringing because I was adopted, that I was a loner because I moved around so much. And even though these events undeniably shaped who I am and my past, I decided that it doesn't have to define my future. For some reason, everything from my childhood or everything in my past really came back to me in my 30s and it's been a process to sort it out. Doing a lot of inner work, shadow work, and just kind of letting go of the things that I was holding on to because they were getting in the way of who I was trying to become. I think it's important to realize that even beyond our 30s and 40s and 50s that we don't have to hold on to just one identity. We can do whatever we want, we can be whoever we wanna be, and we can change if we don't like it. And that's absolutely the beauty of life. Before we continue, I wanna first thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I think about how different my 20s would have been if I had discovered therapy. To say that has helped my mental health would be a complete understatement. 
Just being able to tell my story to a professional has really allowed me to open up, dig a little bit deeper, and connect the dots in my life. I love BetterHelp because it's really easy to get started. Just go to their website and answer some questions, and you'll be matched with a licensed therapist, usually within 48 hours. I think the best part is that you can do it from your phone, your computer, your tablet, via phone call or video chat, whatever is the most comfortable for you. If you want to try it for yourself, you can visit betterhelp.com slash Malama Life or choose Malama Life during the sign up process and enjoy a special little discount for your first month. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Self-care is going to be our greatest investment. And when I say self-care, I don't mean the things that I need to maintain my wellness, but I see it more as a life project to create this healthy and happy life for myself. For me, I think the best self-care advice that I could give is combining the things that you enjoy that also can move your body and reduce stress. That's starting my mornings with good intentions and taking lots of breaks throughout the day, and maybe going for long walks, enjoying time in nature, being creative and enjoying time with friends and family. I've been taking it very seriously for the past couple of years and I can tell you that it has really improved the overall quality of my life. I've gotten rejected so many at this point and in hindsight, I think that they were all real blessings in disguise. If my visa hasn't gotten rejected from the French consulate, then I probably wouldn't have moved to Maui. If I didn't get rejected by all those cool jobs that I applied for, then I probably wouldn't have started YouTube. I used to feel so much shame and embarrassment because I thought those rejections were a reflection of my shortcomings, but in actuality, it was redirecting me to the path that I was supposed to be on. It reminds me of the Sylvia Platt's novel, The Bell Jar and the Fig Tree where the girl cannot choose just one branch because she fears making the wrong decision. And now I understand that it's just a big metaphor for just picking a path, any path, instead of being so afraid of making the wrong choice. I know that there'll be more rejections in the future, but somehow it's kind of reassuring to know that I can never choose the wrong path because it will always redirect me to where I'm supposed to be. And the most important thing is that I just go for it. Another thing in our 30s, it's really easy to get caught up in this comparison game, but I really wish that we could ditch this idea of not measuring up to other people or feeling behind in life because we're all on different paths and comparing ourselves only diminishes the value of our own journey. I try to remember this saying, it goes, if the grass looks greener on the other side, then it's time to water your own lawn. So anytime I feel like, why don't I have that? Or how come my life doesn't look like this? Then I really try to check myself. I look at my husband, I look at my dogs, I look at my life and see how good I have it. All I should be focusing on is how I can pour myself and my love into those things. And that is how my life is gonna flourish. Of course, other milestones will come up in our 30s, but I think the day-to-day -day is more or less the same. We wake up, we go to work, we come home, we do groceries, and it's these little mundane moments that we don't pay attention to, but they're actually what make up most of our lives. My life has been anything but boring in the last two years, but still, I think my favorite moments are just doing absolutely nothing with my husband. We will have both dogs on our bellies, on our couch, and just talk about life. It is absolutely one of my favorite things to do, and I'm so happy to have found someone that I can enjoy the boring moments with. 
I had a whole list of things that I wanted to mention for this video, but really wanted to reduce it down to seven of the most important things that elevated my life. I hope that it was helpful for you to hear my experience. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next video, take care and I'll talk to you soon.